Hey, I'm Josh Peck. I play Scott Turner in the new Disney Plus series, Turner and Hooch, and I'm here with BuzzFeed to talk about my first times. The first time I realized I was famous, I would imagine it was something that my mom told me. My mom uses any level of celebrity I have for her own selfish interests all the time. If you've ever talked to my mom and you're a customer service person, you know that Barbara Peck's son is Josh Peck and that she expects some special treatment. Similarly, if you're a hostess at the Cheesecake Factory, she's gonna drop my name for a better table and maybe some extra bread. Anyway, I think the first time that I felt slightly remotely famous was being, probably was like 16, walking through the Burbank Media Center in Burbank, California, and getting recognized by a mob of kids who watched my show on Nickelodeon. When you get recognized that close to a food court, it sticks with you. My first behind the scenes memory of shooting Drake and Josh, I remember specifically it was in one of the first six episodes that we shot, we lose a baby that we're babysitting on the roof of a house. And the bit was that the baby starts to pee on us as we're trying to give it a bath, which I have a two and a half year old son, this is not far-fetched, it happens all the time. And I just remember I was standing with Miranda and I, who played my little sister, and they had all this piping with the baby, like all this special effects piping to spray like water at us to do the gag. And of course they yelled action and the baby started to pee on us in real life. And I just remember thinking, wow, this is a job. I'm being paid to do this. It's pretty wild memory, but awesome. Oh man, first celebrity crush. I've talked about this before. It was Jennifer Love Hewitt in the movie Can't Hardly Wait. I think I saw her in that movie. I must have been 12. And I remember it clicking in my mind going, I like girls. Girls are awesome. Fast forward about a decade later, I was at a Starbucks in the Valley where crazy things happen. And I ran into Jennifer Love Hewitt. I didn't have the guts to say anything to her, but we shared about three and a half seconds of eye contact. And in that moment, I felt like she knew what she had meant to me at that time, and she appreciated it. First role you really wanted and auditioned for but didn't get. Oh my gosh, this is such a great show. BuzzFeed, you guys are really good at what you do. I remember I auditioned for the movie Holds uh, based on the book, and I was like, maybe 14 or 15 years old. Shia LaBeouf and I, who's a buddy of mine now, we were both, you know, on our kids shows. I remember going to that audition and feeling like great and then going to the callback. And I was like, wow, this really could happen. I love the book, maybe this is mine. And then hearing that Shia got it and just being like totally heartbroken. <laughs> and then watching the movie and being like, oh man, this guy is, very good, very, very good. I, I think Holes, uh, that was the one. I would have been out there eating onions in the middle of the desert, but I think Shia did a better job. First famous friend you made in Hollywood. Ooh, I'm not sure if it was like the first, but it was significant because he was like properly famous and someone I looked up to and I couldn't believe he knew that I existed. So my first famous friend in Hollywood was, I went to performing arts high school in New York. A lot of actors went there like Claire Danes and Jesse Eisenberg and my buddy, Victor Rapp who was on a show called How to Make It in America. And it was him and Kid Cudi. And I remember one night I was at the club, cause I'm cool. I was like, I don't know, 22 years old. And I run into Victor and we're chopping it up. And it's just so good to see, you know, an old high school friend. And he's like, yo, I'm here with some of the cast from the show. Do you want to come meet like Kid Cudi? Scott, he goes by Scott, but like, his real friends, which I am one of. I'm nervous, but okay, yes, I would love to meet these people. And I remember I walk up to Scott, Kid Cudi, and he looks at me and goes, oh, he's like, I love Drake and Josh. And I was like, I love you, Kid Scott Cudi. We wound up talking the whole night. He couldn't have been a better dude. I remember he was like, yo, take my number, like we'll stay in touch. And I'm like, cool joke. We're never gonna stay in touch, Kid Cudi. And he texted me the next day and was like, yo, do you wanna come by the studio and listen to my new album? And I was like, of course I want to do that. And I went and listened to his new album. We haven't talked a lot since then, but it was nice. It was a great two days. <laughs> first thing you remember about the audition process. Okay. So the first thing I remember about the audition process for Turner and Hooch was I'm playing, you know, Scott Turner, Tom Hanks' son from the original movie. I remember them telling me, so for the audition, we're going to have a real dog there. And it wasn't the French Mastiff that is hooch. It was like just whatever gigantic dog was available that day. I think it was a Greyhound. So I had a real dog to act off of. And the producer said, yo, 
improvise, find it. We're not sort of rigid when it comes to this because we know that the dogs have already done their job by being this cute and awesome. And if they don't necessarily stand on their mark for too long, we got to work around them. And we did. My first dog or pet was my dog, Sushi, who was a Bichon. I miss you every day, Sush. He was great. I'm pretty sure I was really allergic to him. And I think it contributed to my childhood asthma. But I don't resent him for that. I resent my mom. I'm just kidding, mom. <laughs> oh, this is great. First untrue rumor you heard about yourself was that I was dead. People have been saying I've been dead for a long time. I think it was predominantly a rumor in Latin America that I had passed away. I'm sorry to tell you, or maybe happy to tell you that I'm still very much alive and happy to be here. Unless this is a simulation, but still, then we're all kind of in more than one world. I don't know. So my first reaction I had to finding out I was going to be a dad. You know, I do comedy at different colleges where I go and I, you know, get to visit all these colleges across the country. And I do like a little bit of stand up and kind of like a moderated Q&A where I talk about my life and stories and experiences. I remember I had a week where I had done like four or five in a row. Every day I was traveling to a new city city and waking up at 6 a.m. and doing the college that night and then flying to a new city. I was flying home back to LA on Friday morning and I thought, you know, Josh, you deserve a break. Just take the weekend off. Don't think about work. This couldn't have gone better. And, and then I land and I get a text from my wife saying, hey, I'm not far. I'll come pick you up from LAX. I, and I think, how lucky am I? And I get in the car and we're driving for about three seconds and she pulls out the pregnancy test. And she's like, mm. and I was like, oh, great, great. Luckily I had the weekend to kind of like wrap my head around it because I was so excited and it's what I'd always wanted, but I don't know if you're ever totally prepared to get that news. It wasn't exactly the most restful weekend I was expecting, but it was definitely the most awesome weekend. First bad date experience. Oh man. To be quite honest, I haven't like been on like a lot of traditional dates. I, I do remember though once going out with this very lovely person and I think she thought or maybe I was mistaken in the dress code for the date like what was going to be appropriate I showed up to pick her up to go get dinner and she was dressed as though we were going to a ball like it was it was very formal and very dressed up and I was like I don't and I'm like in like less than this a t-shirt and jeans and probably like shoes with no socks, literally a step above college frat attire. I'm not sure whether it was embarrassing for me or for her. Maybe it was just not great for either of us. The first thing that I'll do post pandemic, I'm a Schwitz guy. I like a nice sauna experience. I like the cold plunge. There are like a couple great places in LA where you're like, oh, I'd like to get a nice little Schwitz before I shower up. I feel like they've all been closed and you can't do that. It would be nice to do that without any fear or worries. I don't know if that's a weird answer, but it's my truth. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy my new show, Turner and Hooch, streaming now on Disney+. Plus.